In this video, we want to use the skein relation to compute the Jones polynomial of the Hopflink. So um, let me first recall what's the skein relation. So we're going to have the following equality. If we take q to the minus 1 and the Jones polynomial of some positive crossing in a knot, then we take minus q squared, where now we take the Jones polynomial of the same knot where we replace this positive crossing by a negative crossing. And this should be equal to q minus q inverse of the Jones polynomial where I untie the crossing in this way. Um, and we're also going to use the following rules that the Jones polynomial of a knot with the unknot, I can pull out the unknot wire q minus q inverse plus q, and that the Jones polynomial of the unknot is just 1. So here, I'm interested in the Jones polynomial of the hop flink. And in order to do that, we have to choose uh, orientation. So we're going to make this top crossing here. We're going to make that a positive crossing. So we're going to make it both point upwards. And so now we're going to put here the q minus 1 on the on front. And then we're going to get what q squared times the Jones polynomial. And now I'm going to look at this crossing and I make it a negative crossing. Yeah, so how does that would look like? Well, now the bottom strain is going to go over the top strain and go around. So I'm going to get a circle here. And for the other one, well, now this other one will go underneath. Okay, and then on the right hand side, I get q minus q inverse, the Jones polynomial of what? Well, now I will go along uh, the right hand side and instead of crossing, I'll go back. So I'll pretty much get this up here and the orientation will be this. Now, what do I get? Here, this is, I'm not going to touch the hop flink, but now I can compute the Jones polynomial of these two. This here is just the unknot, yeah, the twisted unknot. So this is just going to get equal to 1. And what do I have here? Well, I have two unknots. So one of them I can pull out via this rule up here. So I can pull it out by adding... Uh, minus q inverse plus q. Okay. Now, what do I get? I get here, this is q to the minus 2, the Jones polynomial of the hop flink. Minus um, q square times and then minus q inverse minus q and that is all equal to well q minus q inverse so now we're in the situation where we just have the jones polynomial and the hop flink in this equation and variables otherwise so we can solve now for the jones polynomial of the hop flink and be done with it so let's keep the q to the minus 2 the jones polynomial and the hop flink on this side and we want to move this term here to the right-hand side. So what do we get? Well, this minus b becomes plus, and then we have q squared times minus q inverse. So overall, this gives us minus q. Then we get q squared times minus q. So this gives us minus q to the 3. Um, and then we have plus q minus q inverse. So here we simplify q with minus q, and we'll get that this is minus q to the 3 minus um, q inverse. And so now the only thing that is left is to multiply times q square. So we get that the Jones polynomial of the hop flink is going to be equal to minus q to the fifth minus q. So you might want to ask yourself, why did we introduce another way of computing the Jones polynomial? But you can see, especially when you're going to compute the Jones polynomial for the figure 8 knot, 
that using the skin relation really simplifies your computations. So for the figure eight knot, if you go through the bracket polynomial, you have four crossings. That means to, do, to uncross them, you have to do two to the four, meaning 16 simplifications. And um, so this gives you a lot of computations you have to go through. Whereas using the skin relation, uh, you only have to use it twice or even better, if you use the Jones polynomial of the Hopf link, you only have to do it once and then use the Jones polynomial of the Hopf link.